Hey, so what is going on everyone? I got two unboxings here to share with you. I've got the Mavic 2 Zoom and the Mavic 2 Fly More kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the features and the specs with this one. And we're gonna go ahead and get this out of the box and see if we can cram the drone into it along with my phone and all the batteries. So this is a huge upgrade for me. So I'm really excited to get this thing out of the box. I'm coming from the Phantom 3 to this thing. So this should be pretty exciting. Everything here that you're looking at comes in the box. You get the controller, the drone, the manuals, the charging brick, and the plug, a mini little micro USB connector, and over here you plug in a Type-C connector. You get your USB 3.0 cable here, Type-C connector, a spare pair of little joysticks. You get a pair of extra propellers and a whole set of propellers to get started. We'll go ahead and get started with the drone. I'll point out, like give you a close up and point out what everything is on this drone, but I'm so excited to actually have one one of these. It has this nice little plastic bubble here to protect the camera and the gimbal. And right underneath, all you got to do is kind of press this little plastic thing in and this pops right out of there really nice and easy. For those of you who own a previous model, you can already see this thing has a completely upgraded gimbal system here. Let's go ahead and open up the arms on this thing. You open these ones up first and then these ones here like spin out. So this thing's got a ton of sensors all over it. Right here's the front sensors. So you got your lateral sensors. You got one here and one on the other side. You have two rear sensors right here. Here you got two more sensors helping you with the downward vision. This is a downward infrared sensing system and these are considered a fill light, kind of like landing lights. So these little thingies right here pop up and you have your SD card slot over here. And this one right here is a link button with a linking status indicator. These two things right here are your antenna. Antennas. These are status indicator lights and they're on all four propeller arms. This one right here is your upward infrared sensing system. Right here's your USB-C port. So in here right around the power button there's little battery level LED indicators. So to get the battery out of here you just squeeze in these battery buckles and the battery pops right out. And here's just a quick look at the battery. And here's a quick look at the battery compartment. The propellers are very easy to match up. This one over here, you can see there's no like gray circle around it. This one here, you can see like a gray circle around it there in the middle. See how it has like these gray markings over here. And this one here is all black. This one goes with this side. This one goes with this side. I'll show you real quick how easy they just snap on there. So here's what the bottom of it looks like. And if you look close, you can see little arrows and a little lock. So it tells you exactly which direction to go in. And all you need to do is kind of just line that up and if you lightly press down, all you gotta do is turn it and it's locked right in place. That's all there is to it. And to remove it, you just press it down, spin it back and it pops right out. I wanna jump over here and go over the controller real quick and then we'll jump back to the drone and talk more about things that this is capable of doing. So just taking a look at the controller now, it takes about two hours and 15 minutes to charge this controller and I believe it lasts for about two hours and 15 minutes. So the charge time and the run time is about the same for this controller. And I don't know if I mentioned or not, but the battery on the Mavic takes about an hour and a half to charge. So you got your LCD screen here. You have a flight pause button right here. You have a 5D button. So the joysticks or the control sticks that actually go right there are stored right up in here. Just screw them down in there and you're all ready to go. So when you're gonna store these little things up in there, they just kind of sit up in there. You just give it a little press up in there and they just hold there. So I might as well mention with these things opened up that you can fit a phone in here that's 160 millimeter in length. I do not know if you can squeeze them in any bigger than that and I don't know if the Samsung Galaxy S9 Note will fit in here because I believe the Note is 161 millimeters so I don't know if that's going to make that much of a difference I don't know if it'll fit in here or not so I know if you're going to use like an iPad or a tablet with this you want to use the USB port on this controller which is right there so there's actually three RC cables that come with this I believe this is the type C one and this is the micro USB one and the one that is currently installed with the remote is the lightning cable and that one you can see runs up there and plugs in so you just have to match the cable up to whatever device you're going to use as far as your phone or whatever so something additionally i want to share with all of you quick i noticed that this port right here is a micro ab port and this is where you're going to plug your charger in to charge the remote controller now the only thing that may throw some people off is the plug right here that you're looking at is a micro a plug but the charging brick right here comes with a micro b plug this port right here is completely compatible with both of those plugs so here 
here's a close-up of both of them. You can see the one on the right, which is micro A, is more like square looking, and the one on the left, which is micro B, is pretty much what we're all used to using, plugging in our phones and all that. You see the orientation that this plug is in right there? Make sure that when you go to plug in the charger, you're facing the wire like that in the same orientation. So basically, I'm just plugging that in the same orientation as this one and it snaps right in there. The way you don't wanna do it is like this. Don't try and force it in there. So finishing going around the remote, we have the power button here, the antennas here at the top. You have the RTH button right here. And on this side, we have the flight mode switch. So up here on the top, you have your gimbal dial, your zoom adjustment dial, the record button, the focus shutter button, and these buttons on the back are customizable buttons. So jumping back over here to the drone, there's a few specs and features I wanted to cover. So the battery with this does give you a 31 minute flight time, which is an upgrade from the previous batteries. That would be why it's a little wider in the front, a little bigger, and a little bit heavier. The gimbal obviously has definitely been upgraded much better design, better protection there. So this thing can operate at up to 44 miles per hour or 72 kilometers per hour. And of course you get the obstacle sensing in all six directions, left, right, up, down, front, back. But left and right obstacle sensing only works in active track and tripod mode. And this Mavic 2 Zoom supports 8-bit, which is equal to 16 million colors, compared to the Mavic 2 Pro, which supports 10-bit and has colors over a billion for greater color correction capabilities. You also get hyperlapse with this where you can set waypoints and circles and you can just kind of fly around. And this will pretty much put all the photos together to create an awesome hyperlapse. And it pretty much does that on board the drone. This also supports H.265 and both the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom have a max video bit rate of 100 meg. One thing I hope they do is come out with a built-in screen for the controller. That way it would free up your phone. So with this Mavic 2 Zoom, you're gonna be using DJI's new OcuSync 2, which is an upgrade from the previous models. That allows you to go up to five miles away or what's equal to eight kilometers. And that's quite a distance. I would imagine that would have to be pretty much like unobstructed or free of interference. So you're getting a much stronger signal with this one and a higher bandwidth, which is going to give you greater performance. It's also very helpful if you're in an area where you have a lot of signals like Wi-Fi or cellular type signals or whatever signals that would interfere with the drone, but it has an auto feature built in and it knows how to switch back and forth. So why I decided to buy the Mavic 2 Zoom is because it has the 24 to 48 millimeter optical zoom built into the controller. It also has the dolly zoom quick shot effect. So they've improved APAS, which is a system designed to help the user avoid obstacles. They've also improved active track and the this unit is not waterproof, and I don't think you can take photos while you're recording video. But you can record at 4K 30 frames a second along with several other recording formats. But anyway, that's pretty much all I had for you for this unboxing. Let's jump over now and unbox the Mavic 2 Fly More Kit. And the only two things in the box was the bag and the Fly More Kit user guide. That's pretty cool. So Mavic 2 there at the top. All right, so here's everything out of the bag. You get the bag, of course. You get two extra batteries. You get a strap for the bag. You get the charging hub. You get extra propellers. That little gadget back there is a power bank to USB adapter, which will go over and you get your car charger. Let's just take a quick look at the bag. It looks like you got plenty of compartments in here. When I originally unloaded it, the batteries were down in there. There was this little thing. I think it acts as like maybe a divider between batteries, but but then when you press that down in there, you can open that up. And then of course you can see it's kind of divided up. You'll probably pop your drone in here. You got this compartment up here at the top. So then you have more storage up here in the front and this is where the blades were actually stored at. So on the side, you have these like extra pouches here. And on the very top, you have another compartment. All right, so let's start with the battery charging hub that folds up nice and neat like that. No need to really take that stuff out of the packaging. This is just the strap. Of course, the blades back there, I probably won't even need Need to use them for quite a long time. So the car charger and the wall charger will plug into this charging hub. And just taking a look at this side, it does have a status LED indicator and it also opens up just like this. And the power port is on the bottom. This also has a micro USB port allowing you to do a firmware upgrade on this device. So right now these batteries are actually in hibernation mode. So when I press the button, they're not gonna light up. They will wake up once you plug them in and power this charging hub. So when you wanna connect your batteries to this charging hub, you just set them right here and they slide right into the port. Just like that, real nice and easy. And that's kind of what it looks like when they're both on there. So when it comes time to connect your car charger to the charging hub, all you need to do is take this and plug it into the bottom 
pops right in there and then you can route your wire through this nice little channel there they have cut out and the same thing goes for the wall charger just connect this to this port down here like that and route your wire and then you can set this thing on the counter on the floor and charge your batteries so this status led indicator here on the charging hub will actually show a slow pulsing green when the batteries are charging and when all the batteries are fully charged it will show a solid green and if it's plugged in and there's no batteries inserted and it's ready to charge it'll show a solid yellow and if you plug your batteries into this and it's blinking yellow, that means it's waiting for the battery to recover to optimal temperature for charging. So if this thing's showing a solid red, that means there's a power supply or a battery error and you need to check the components. So when you're actually using the car charger to charge the batteries in this charging hub, I believe this light lights up solid green while it's charging. And when it's finished charging, the lights on the battery will be completely out. Then you're supposed to disconnect the car charger. So whenever you're charging your batteries in here, you are not to touch any of these contacts here, of course. But if you have four batteries charging in this, each one takes about an hour and a half to charge. So you're looking at about six hours total to charge the batteries. So this charging hub does not charge these batteries simultaneously. It actually charges them in sequence according to the remaining power level of the battery, with the more fully charged batteries receiving the power first. So if this battery has got 20% battery life left and this one has 40% battery life left, it's gonna charge this one first and then it'll go to this one. So it charges them in order, it knows how to do that. You don't have to put them on there any certain way. It's just another feature of this cool charging bank. So this nifty little power bank adapter has two USB ports and it allows you to plug directly into a fully charged battery. So it just plugs right onto the battery just like that. So doing it this way, you can charge the Mavic 2 remote controller or your mobile devices like your phones or your tablets. So this actually has a 10 watt dual output and that allows you to fully charge a smartphone only using 20% of one battery. So I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that I didn't cover, but I hope this provided a little insight on this whole entire kit. And that's pretty much all I have for you as far as going over all this. Now let's go ahead and get the bag back up here and I want to put everything in the bag and take a look at that and what all fits in there. Okay, so I went ahead and loaded all my stuff in here. I was able to get everything in there, including my phone over here on this side, along with the charging hub. So what I'm going to do, I have the controller over here. I'm going to go ahead and unload it. There's still room in this pouch here and for two batteries. So let me go ahead and unload it and show you what I was able to get in there. So I have the drone in there. I had my phone in there, the charging hub. Up here, there was still room left. And you can see there's still room left for two batteries at the top. The little adapter at the top and the controller over on this side. In the front, the car charger, the propellers, and then down underneath here, the two batteries. So I was basically able to get all this stuff in here in that bag. It was a little tight, but you could also still put two more batteries in there on the top and you have a little room up there. So quite a nice setup. And now I got to get going so I can get all this firmware upgraded and get out there and making some drone videos. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope this video was helpful. And all the links to everything will be down in the description below if you want to go check out prices on this stuff. And as always, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Click that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.